Welcome back to the Bible Podcast. My name is Dale Miller on the Bible Podcast. We elevate the Word of God to the throne of our heart, declaring it the authority over our mind, senses, and feelings and emotions. We declare Jesus' Word authority over our being. You are a spirit being having a physical experience in this realm. This Holy Bible is a spiritual living book that will minister to you, but it's going to require your focus, discipline, and commitment to it. Just like if you were going to go continue uh, through uh, the basic kindergarten through 12th grade. It's going to require focus, discipline, and commitment. Just like if you were going to continue your studies in a special field, it's going to require your focus, discipline, and commitment. Just like if you were going to perfect a profession and extend your schooling to be a doctor, a ballerina teacher, or a pianist, or uh, a race car driver, or go into the military, you're going to undergo extensive training in specialized fields that will require you to have focus, discipline, and commitment. Thousands upon thousands of people wash out during these tr focus, discipline, and commitment times, let alone just, just, just give up on studies, give up on the commitment, give on, give up on the, the discipline. Okay. But guess what? If you're going to achieve that certificate, if you're going to achieve that achievement, it, 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 it that's the basic requirement. Wouldn't you agree that you have to have at least focus, discipline, and commitment to the field of interest, the field of study, if you're going to uh, perform at that level of professionalism you have to achieve first focus discipline and commitment so that's what we promote on the Bible podcast even with the Word of God even with living in this realm the God of heaven made sure that you had a manual that you could perfect mature develop out of adolescence immaturity narcissism uh, okay self-pity and you could develop uh, your knowledge of what he requires to enter into the kingdom of heaven. All right. So it doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you assume. It matters what he has written, what he has purchased, what he taught, and what he caused his apostles to carry on. Praise God. Carry on. And thank God for the Word of God. Now, on the Bible podcast, we elevate uh, the Bible to its highest place, to the throne of our heart. And it's a battle. Be careful. Because the illusions, distractions, uh, uh, the promiscuousness of this realm is ready to trip you up if you allow it. Now, the Bible teaches us all of the schemes of Satan. And he's the number one enemy against your soul. No, it's not your first, second, third, fourth, or even fifth wife, ex-wife. It's you. You're the common denominator to you. Okay? <laughs> and on the, on the day of judgment, you will be required of you to give an account. And there's where th you tuning in to this channel is going to benefit your eternal existence. Because we cut to the chase. Um, and so, uh, again, the Bible podcast, we, we also elevate this truth. Is that uh, half truths are still lies. How about that? Being sincerely wrong doesn't make it right. Okay, and, and look... What I just mentioned when I kicked off this podcast about the Bible podcast was that if you're going to study in any profession or, I mean, right down to an auto mechanic, right down to cleaning teeth or uh, working on your eyes, 
listen, you can be sincerely wrong, but they're not going to pass you because you can't pass the final exam. Come on. Come on. It's all around us. It's in our everyday approach to life. And uh, kudos to all of you that have discipl focused, disciplined, and committed yourself to a profession. And, and you've achieved. You know what I'm talking about. So don't, don't think that this is any less, okay? And you got to be very careful. Half-truths are still lies. Being sincerely wrong doesn't make it right. And good intentions will not save you. These are a fact, okay? We need focus, discipline, and commitment. And we need to understand as we approach the Word of God that we're going to have to get rid of some of the things we were told, some of the things we thought and assumed, and, and really quote the Scripture, okay? Paul did not write Timothy and say, study to show yourself approved and have your own opinion. Uh-uh. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. How about that? Rightly dividing. And if it can be rightly divided, it can be wrongly divided. And this is where Satan gets his foothold into the narcissistic realm of, of narcissistic men and women who want to elevate their opinion control people and push their ideology and agenda that's where you get the government church and all your reformation churches none of which preach the apostles doctrine that should concern you would you invest in a university that you thought you were going to to be a heart doctor when really when you joined uh they were they taught you everything about the foot i mean you would be like wait a minute that that that's not why I signed up and paid a bunch of money and was, you know, got here on time. And now I'm sitting down and for six months now, I've learned nothing but about the foot when I came here to be a heart doctor. You would, you would have to dismiss yourself or become a foot doctor. Okay. But we are trying to make heaven. Is that right? Is that why you tuned in? Because with the knowledge of the word of God, It'll save your soul. Why? Because it'll teach you to be obedient. Okay? All right. That, I know. I know. I was a teenager. I grew up in a godless home. And that doesn't mean my mom and dad were bad people or stepmom were bad people. It just means their interest wasn't in their in eternal being. And they were more focused on the things that were, you know, thing. And yes, I mean, you know, so... So, so I'm just saying that maybe you're from the same environment. Maybe you were from an abusive environment, sexually abused, drugs that were all around you. Well, guess what? By the grace and mercy of God, here you are tuned in. You have your senses. You have your elements. Uh, and, and now it's time for you to press on. Go beyond uh, uh, the darkness. Go beyond the shadows and walk in the light. Jesus said, abide in the light. John wrote this. Abide in the light as he is in the light. That's where we got to abide, folks. So by the grace and mercy of God, here we are abiding in the light and learning the, the apostles' doctrine on this channel. Now, I'm going to flash up a photo of a church building. Okay, it looks like a church. Look at that. Okay, I think I, I'm going to try to put it up right, right here, right up in here. Okay, so look, it looks like a church. Okay. It looks welcoming, doesn't it? It, it looks like, uh, you know, people got together, were focused, disciplined, and committed, and they put together a church building, and that's wonderful. Yeah, that, it's got a steeple. It's got the double doors, the white. I would, you know. Now I'm going to show you. So look at that. That's a church building. But you know what we say on the Bible podcast, you can never judge a book by its cover. <laughs> that's right. That's the truth. But if you... If you hang around, if you stick around long, you'll hear the pages speak to you. Okay, so now this next photo is the sign uh, that's um, out front of this church. And I want to show you what this church deemed to share with the public. Okay, and of course, they went to the book of Romans. Okay, and look what this sign says. Read it. Okay. Now, and whosoever uh, now whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved okay and they give scripture Romans okay so so like I said now look at that okay so think of the influence of people driving by that building seeing that sign and in their mind whatever experience that they had 
referenced to the word of God. So, so if I'm a, you know, if I'm a sinner and I'm driving by that church, I see the building. Oh, it's all nice and well and kept up and looks real to church. I reckon. And then the sign says, you know, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, I'm going to think right away, well, good, I'll call on the name of the Lord while I'm going to go get my, you know, gas, gas tank filled up and there I'm saved and just keep on going. You see, now, now think about, you know, what, if you've tuned into the Bible podcast, you know where we stand against the, we blow up Satan's um, conscrewed uh, perceptions of salvation. Okay, once saved, always saved. All you have to do is, one of them is once saved, always saved. Okay, and the other one is, all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The other one is the Romans road, Romans 10, 10, 9, and 10. And we talk about the thief on the cross. Okay, and Lord, I'll always be a sinner. See, we blow that up. It's not going to fly on the Bible podcast. Now, if you're truthful with yourself, okay, you've got to admit you're not focused, disciplined, or committed to the Word of God. So you'll never be a doctor. You'll never be an eye surgeon. You'll never be a. a you'll never be what the Bible requires us to be to enter into the kingdom of heaven. If I'm going to tell God I'm always going to be a sinner, then Calvary has no value. The blood of Jesus has no value. Jesus didn't die on the cross so we could wallow in sin. Okay, I'm serious. You didn't join you didn't sign up and pay a bunch of money uh, as a freshman in college so you could stay at the freshman level. No, 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 no. I'm telling you folks, you know, you put money, you invested money so that the institution had teachers and instructors to groom you from the very fundamental basics all the way through so you would be a professional in that field. Now, if you showed up on the first day of your profession um, and the people around you there were anticipating you built, showing them that you know what you're doing and you turned out where you don't even know uh, anything about the equipment, then they know they've hired the wrong person. Okay, quite frankly, you're going to get fired, dismissed, okay, sent back. And you will have wasted a couple hundred thousand on a useless certificate. Okay, folks, it's the same way here. You know, it's the same way. You're not going to profess to be a Christian and wallow in sin till your grave. I mean... You know, that, that, what that shows is the blood wasn't good enough. What that shows is that Jesus serves you. You don't serve him. And you never met the requirement of development. Come on. If, if your child stayed an infant and he was 40 years old living in your basement, do you think that would be a problem? All right. Well, I'm just making something very noticed. The elephant in the room. <laughs> the, the elephant in the room. We've, look. Paul said we had to we, we got to obey the apostles doctrine and get saved. Then we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Now, uh now the Bible never uh tells us to have an agreement with sin, okay? Never. The Bible says if you are carnally minded, uh you're an enemy of God. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace in the Holy Ghost. See, and, and, and then you're not going to do the things uh, that uh, cause you to feel guilty, shameful. Listen, it's a battle. What did you think? There's things you're, you're going to suffer. Why? Because for how many years we condition ourselves addicted to sinful habits. So it is going to be a battle and we need to depend on the Lord and we need to be overcomers. We will overcome by the testimony of Jesus Christ in our life through the blood, through his spirit and rise to the new creature. Praise God. And remember when you're buried in the name of Jesus in baptism, you're dead. Okay. I know that is a fundamental, every, uh, fundamental, but okay. Back to this church, back to the sign. So if I'm driving by, I'm thinking, well, I don't have to go to church. All I can do is just call on the name of the Lord and I'll be saved. There you go. There you have it. Think about the liability of that sign promoting to the community. They don't have to come to church. They can just drive by, say, Lord, save me, and keep on going. Now, I want to say this to be very clear. <clears throat> In the realm of being a sinful person and per telling the Lord you're always going to be a sinner, 
I'm going to say that God will always deal with you. Absolutely. Amen. He, he is always going to deal with you until you get fed up with yourself, till you get fed up of the feelings and emotions and the thought cycle process that and the guilt and the shame. There's enough in the realm of sin that when you don't properly take care of it properly or mature out of it, you're going to drive yourself batty. You'll, you will. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. So I want to say that to everybody who says they're always going to be a sinner. They're always going to, you know, and okay. Okay. God's always going to deal with you. Yes, it's exactly right. And eventually, you know, it's up to the Lord whether uh, he contends with you or not. That's in the word of God. God's spirit will not always contend with a, 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 a human being. Okay. But that's something we need to consider when we're fiddling with sin, when we're running back and forth. You know, what I see in the conduct of someone who says they'll always be a sinner is, and check this out, they'll, they'll, um, they'll, they'll live the way they want to in the flesh through the, you know, the carnality, all their addictions, all their, uh, all their excuses. Okay. They'll do that. But then when someone asks them, they will say they're always going to be a sinner and that if you say you're perfect, you're, you're, li you're a liar. Now, so let me just say this. If you believe you're always going to be a sinner, are, are, what are you doing? You know, are, that's not what the Bible promotes. Not at all. Paul would write church letters to groom them out of their adolescence and immaturity and, and sin habit to come up and, and be mature and do it right and please God through the Spirit, through obedience, okay? But they always like to say, you know, they always like to come across when they admit, well, I'm always going to be a sinner, they're, that they're humble and, they, and they're pious, okay? When really, that's a disguise of a covert narcissist. That's what that is. They know how to shift, you know, they know how to play the realm. They know how to play the environment. They know how to go and 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 sin it up and then they know how to go and church it up but they never grow up that's right that see you got to grow up yeah eventually paul, paul said he put away childish things and he matured he went on so yeah we all got to grow up so you look you know, and it's not, I cannot determine when the Lord will cut you off, when the Lord will deal with you, but I know he'll deal with you. And I know if you meet me, I'm going to encourage you to grow up. I'm just going to say, hey, have you obeyed the apostles doctrine? You know, how often do you study the word of God? How often are you in prayer? Have you received the Holy Ghost? And most of the pious uh, sinners and uh, covert narcissists all say, I got the Holy Ghost. And I say, well, how do you know? And they'll say, well, what do you mean? <laughs> okay. How did the apostles know they got the Holy Ghost? Come on, folks. It's no different. And see, we lie to ourselves. We ignore what we need to take care of. Then we, then we, 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 we get frustrated because we're still living in the debauchery that the Lord's trying to deliver us out of. But we're doing it to ourselves. Okay, so look at the influence of the church and the church sign, what it says as people walk by, as people drive by, okay? It tells them a narrative that they're in control. When you feel like calling on the name of the Lord, you go ahead and the Lord's going to save you, okay? Well, it leaves you in control. It is the, it is the perfect way to soothe God to a lower value in your in your heart. Absolutely. Why didn't that say sign say repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Get ready for the day of wrath. Escape the day of wrath. I mean, you know what you know, that would make me want to say, wow, that, that, that certainly has me wondering what this church is teaching, and I'd like to go in and see what it's all about, rather than a statement. Now, it sounds good, just call on the name and you're going to be saved, but 
here's what people you have to understand when you make a statement like that to to people who have no idea or the first time ever seeing a suggestion from the word of god and you tell them just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart wow that's not what peter said to the jewish nation you see and it, it it's very wouldn't you say it's very critical when you show up for class that you understand what the instructor is saying well this is your instructor and for you just to put on a sign a general docker a general statement that has has the individual who's reading it or driving by it ignore never know about the heartbeat of being right you see that that statement is saying all you gotta do is call on the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. That makes me assume I'm right that when God shows up I'm gonna be ready when that is so far from the truth. That's not what Peter said to the Jews, nor did Philip say to the Samaritans, nor did Peter say to the Gentiles, nor did Jesus say from heaven to Saul in ninth chapter of Acts, and neither was that what Paul said to the nineteenth chapter believers and disciples of John. So so you know, okay, okay, all right, so someone needs to get into the uh, Bible at that church. But see, now multiply that statement by 10,000 by 10,000. You know, here in Florida, there is a church every two miles or less. And none of them, very few, preach the Apostles' Doctrine. So think about it. It's a garden, a garden of deception of the Word of God, of the experience of salvation. Now that's what really matters. The impression of what is required is washed away by the doctrines of devils, seducing spirits, doctrines of men. Now all of your persuasions that come from the Catholic Church never taught the Apostles' Doctrine. Do your church history. All of your Reformation churches come from the Catholic Church. Okay? And the Catholic was a government church who instituted in 325 AD infant baptism. And why do you say infant baptism? Because what the Catholic Church was trying to do is gain control in the community that your child had to be confirmed through baptism and logged into their books. And that was very powerful to persuade the minds of families in the community that they had to belong to the church. And under the influence of the Roman Catholic Church, they demanded it. And they recorded that infant's name in a book. Okay, and so think of the influence of I'm a Catholic. Look how look at the influence and the power of the Catholic Church today. But if you do your church history, you're going to find out they were murderous, greedy, narcissistic. It's narcissistic. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. They would murder each other to gain power and control, and that's narcissism. They would murder false accused to gain control. They didn't like you. They just had to make something up. And if you didn't follow their pernicious ways, you were yeah. You know, there's a good chance you were burned at the stake. But you do your research on the Catholic Church. Okay, the cardinals, the deacons, they murdered each other. It was all about greed, money, and control. So, so the Jesus never required never never leaned on the catholic church never leaned on any of the reformation churches what the reformation did was take a little bit of scripture and turn it into a uh, a movement that's all but they know they do not obey the apostles doctrine how do you obey the apostles doctrine have you heard what peter preached on the day of pentecost did you know that he was given the keys to the kingdom of heaven. How about that? Matthew chapter 16. Okay. Jesus gives Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven. He never made duplicates and he never gave keys to the Roman Catholics or any Reformation church. Any. Okay. But Satan loves the fact that you don't know which is, which is right. 
They all say they're right. How about that? Will the real church please step forward? And it will once you get focused, disciplined, and committed to reading the Word of God, rightly dividing the Word of God. No scripture of prophecy of the Bible is of any private interpretation. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be a sinner the rest of his life. No, perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. How about that? It's no, you can't hide behind your excuse. What Jesus did on the cross nullifies me being a repeat offender. It nullifies, and it gives me this, gives me the strength and the hope to know that if I put my very best focus, discipline, and commitment, and I, I seek first the kingdom of heaven and put his word upon the throne of my heart, look at the potential, look at what you can achieve with the hand of God on your heart, in your in your mind. You know, we teach on the Bible podcast that you're the one responsible for the thoughts of your heart. The Bible says you've got to bring down your thoughts and imaginations to the obedience. See, it's not it's not it's not God's fault. Be careful what you think, what you look at, what you listen to, what you say about yourself. Okay? All right, it's your responsibility. It's your responsibility for your God-given mind, your senses, and your feelings and emotions. It's just being mature. It's just growing up. It's just acknowledging what you're responsible for. We are relentless about the Apostles' Doctrine. If you want to study this, it's, uh, it's recorded. Acts chapter 2, 8, 9, 10, and 19. Paul would write to the Corinthians in the first chapter of Corinthians. He said, did I baptize any of you in my name? See, there's a name, not titles. Titles and baptism will not save you. Your sin is still upon you. You must go down in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. No one in the Bible was ever baptized Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Matthew was not baptized in Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Matthew did not write his gospel till 30, 35 years after his baptism in Jesus' name. He did not have an argument with Peter on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, okay, about how to be baptized. Come on. The name of the Father is Jesus. Jesus said, I come in my Father's name. And the Son is Jesus. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Jesus is the Holy Ghost. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. It was expedient that Jesus had to go into heaven so he could manifest himself through the Holy Ghost to the whole humanity. Isn't that wonderful? At one time. Praise God. He could be everywhere at all time for you, for me, for whatever need. Praise God. What a, what a connection. Praise God. We, we learn on the Bible podcast that you must be obedient. You must obey. Repent, be baptized in Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost. We practice focus, discipline, and commitment. Listen, if you want to get a fresh outlook on life, look inside your heart, okay? Get focused, disciplined, and committed to your wellness and make an agreement with the Word of God that you're going to study to show yourself approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of God. All right. You know, Jesus had focus, discipline, and commitment. He had it. Yes, he did. And and when, when you read the Gospels, look through the lens of how focused, disciplined, and committed Jesus was. Okay? Uh, and uh, you'll see that he was shamed and guilted uh, by family members, that he was going to be killed by the his local church, his home church. Uh, they wanted to kill him. His brothers and sisters got angry with him. And there were consequences for Je Jesus living at the level of uh, God's ministry through him. There was consequences. That's right. Okay. So Jesus would be crucified for these fo this focus, discipline, and commitment. And he never lied. You know, he never, he never apologized for forgiving sin. He never um, uh, said that he wasn't who he said he was <laughs> you know uh you know they said who are who do you think you are jesus and he said before abraham was i am come on okay and then finally you know when G when jesus was in his ministry he, he was trying to build his value by healing raising the dead 
and and he would run into people who just didn't believe his apostles were shaky the communities were shaky but but boy the people that got healed and the people that were shown miracles they came to Jesus with faith and believing they came to Jesus with uh, a passion to have re resolve and they received it you see we we in America have come to an agreement with sin agreement with debauchery agreement with narcissism no wonder we treat the Bible with the same contempt this we we got to sit we've got to make a stand look we're in that hour where you know the true you is going to appear okay and it's going to take a real commitment real focus real commitment real discipline not this part time i'm always going to be a sinner the pious humble repeat offender you know that makes you look like before god yeah you're, you're telling the truth about yourself. Repeat offending is still a crime. And we have to understand that. And look, you think I'm uh, uh, immune to uh, the things of this world? Well, guess what? It, you know, it takes training. What have you trained yourself to do? What are you training to do every day? Look in the mirror and say, I'm going to put up with my, uh, you know, my nature of offending God? Well, you've become your own God. You've become your own own. That's it. When you submit to Jesus, okay, get ready, because now he's going to help you be an overcomer. Why? Jesus was. Praise God. He faced the enemy of your soul. Satan tried to tempt Jesus. What did Jesus do? He used the word. Praise God. Jesus quoted the word. He didn't have a, a magic potion. He didn't use uh, uh, ideology of, of being a repeat offender. No, he said, it is written. It is written. It is written. It is written, man shall not live on bread alone. You see, you're not going to get around uh, being perfect unless you make a focused, disciplined, and committed uh, declaration to reading the word of God. You, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And then you're going to quit tempting God. When Jesus was put on the pinnacle, Satan said, jump off and just before you crack your head against that rock or, or dash your foot against that stone, angels will come down and raise you up. Jesus said, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord. And that's what we're doing. Okay, we need to stop that. That's adolescence and immaturity. We can see the adolescence in Satan's stronghold on tempting God. Yeah, and isn't it ironic when we're teenagers, we think we can do anything, live forever, and it's never going to have consequences. Well, reality hits in, or un unfortunately, people don't get a second chance to tempt God. Okay, it, listen, folks, being in this realm is a high risk. The fact that you and I are still here today is a miracle, okay? When millions of people around the globe have been snuffed out by a tragedy, an accident, natural causes, or, or a crime, have been snapped, their life has been taken. So folks, none of us have a guarantee. You don't know the future, but he does. You don't know that tempting God has consequences. I didn't, but when you become a God-fearing when you develop your maturity through God-fearing and reading and praying and believing for, for the Word of God in your life, there's going to be an epic change in your thought process. Well, Jesus had it. And the Bible says in Hebrews that for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despised the shame. Okay? And he purchased our salvation. He's not a bail... I mean, a Bales bondsman is someone you all... Well, he could be your Bales bomb. He was my... But but see, if I keep going back to jail, I mean, I don't know. I, I If I was to continue to be a repeat offender, what do you think? What do you think about being a repeat offender? Okay? Do you think that that pleases the Lord? Do you think that makes him happy? Or, does, do, or do you really need to dig a deeper, get focused, disciplined, and committed... And let the Lord's Spirit, through the Holy Ghost, be an overcomer over any situation in your life. Whether it's mental, in your senses, or your feelings and emotions, and your conduct. Okay. 
Well, the apostles hung around Jesus for three and a half years, okay? And they struggled. Now, come on. But they even said, Lord, are, are you going to restore the kingdom at this time? And the Lord says, it's not for you to know. But, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, Acts chapter 1. And he told them to tarry in Jerusalem. They finally got it. And they had to be obedient to achieve it. Okay, Jesus had it. The apostles got it. Okay, and the nations received it. And they received it through the message that Peter delivered in Acts chapter 2, 8, 9, 10, and 19. Okay, everybody was obedient to the same salvation that was started by the apostles. Okay, we, we've got to expose Satan's imposters, counterfeit, deceptions, seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, and traditions of men. Okay, it, because it's out there. And it's like a tidal wave. It's a tsunami of deception. And you've tuned into this Bible podcast because you know what? Maybe you've grabbed your Bible and said, I'm going to look at Acts 2, 8, 10, and 9, and 19. What's he talking about? They don't teach this in church. Not, I'm not saying that at all. Most of your churches. And Satan loves the foothold of uh, deception, imposters, counterfeit. Okay. Okay, because it's real. We, we've got to get saved, not suckered. Now, how about that? Okay, don't be a sucker. Oh, my goodness. I think I, I think I hit a nerve. Don't be a sucker. Your soul depends on you. Your success when you walk with God depends on your focus, discipline, and commitment to the Word of God. If, if you, you know what? You would never take $100,000 and try to go to a university and someone outside the university just walks up to you and hands you a piece of paper and says, you, you've achieved uh, everything that you need to know. Here's your, here's your fake certificate. Now you just go on. I'm, I'm serious. Think about that. No, you would know in yourself. I haven't done one day of study. I don't know what's required to be a heart doctor. But I, somebody walked up to me and handed me a certificate, okay, and said, here, you're a doctor now, a heart doctor. Now go, go get, first off, you know you're not going to get a job. But in this world of deception, oh yeah, someone would hire you. But see, the end result is you're killing people. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You would never do. Don't be a sucker. Okay? And that's where, you know, that we can't just believe anything. And, and that's where I say, hey, check, you know, study your Bible. Comment in the section below. Okay. Humans are the easiest to deceive. How about that? Uh, humans like validation from other human beings. Okay, and other human beings use this advantage to twist the word of God. One, to control you. Two, to promote their own agenda and their ideas. You see that? Look how it, you see what I mean? That sign out there in front of that church that said, just call on the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. What does that do? That, that, that sounds real easy. Well, it, I'm sorry, there's nowhere in scripture Here's what I will say about calling on the name of the Lord. When you call on the name of the Lord, I did when I was 17. I said, if there's a God, help me. That's what I said. Now, what did I do? I put in motion. That's right. I put in motion the plan that God would bring to me through another servant of the Lord who would share with me what I must do. So I called on the name of the Lord. But it put in motion heaven. And I had to come in through the word of God. So keep calling on the name of the Lord. And you're going to run into someone that's going to tell you what you must do. Hopefully, you'll just take the Bible podcast uh, and say, I'm going to study what this man talks about in Acts 2, 8, 9, 10, and 19. What, what, did, what did the first Christians do? What did the first apostles do? How did they know they got the Holy Ghost? What did they say to them when they were baptized? It matters. Okay. So, so we know that 
churches love to get control. They love to promote their agenda. And, uh, and we need to be aware of that and their ideas. But it is about control. So we got to get back to the Bible. Believe in Jesus' teachings and follow the apostles to their obedience to Jerusalem and, ob and obey the salvation message delivered from Peter. You know, on the Bible podcast, we exposed the thief on the cross was under the Old Testament and was en and entered in under the Old Testament covenant. It's real simple. But millions of people have been told, just do what the thief on the cross did. Call on the name of the Lord. Well, that's that's not properly understanding uh, that that whole situation. The thief on the cross was still under the Old Testament. And when he made his repentance, made his confession to Jesus, Jesus said today, Jesus was his lamb, shed his blood for the Old Testament requirement. The thief became a, a citizen of the kingdom of heaven under the Old Testament covenant. Now remember when Jesus dies, he says, it is finished. The veil in the temple's rent top to bottom. Okay, he became the atonement for the New Testament. He became the atonement for the past, present, and future sin. That's what he did. You're not going to change that. You can't excuse it, dodge it, run from it. You need to accept it. Now, when you accept what Jesus has done, go on and be obedient. Now, nowhere in the 40 days when Jesus rose from the dead, did he say, guys, did you see what the thief on the cross did? Weren't you there? I, was, I saw you were there. Weren't you paying attention? I was saving him. Okay, now why don't you just do the same thing? Call on me right now, and you're saved. No, he never brought it up. He never brought up in 40 days the thief on the cross. Jesus never said, all you got to do is confess and believe. In those 40 days that Jesus showed himself with infallible proofs that he was alive from the dead, he never promoted any of the 99% persuasions of the doctrines seducing spirits of men and, and doctrines of devils. No, he never said, do what the thief on the cross said. He never said, oh, uh, uh, just Matthew, you got the baptism down. Okay, great, because you're going to write that 35 years after your baptism in my name in the name of Jesus Christ. I mean, think of the confusion. But what we get rid of, what is vacuumed out, so we get a real crystal clear picture of what is required, is that those 40 days from the time he was uh, rose from the dead till the time he was on the Mount of Olives and taken into heaven, he never promoted once saved always saved he never promoted just confess and believe in your heart he never promoted the thief on the cross he never promoted romans 10 9 and 10 he never promoted what these churches say on their boards just call on the name of the lord and thou shalt be he never promoted that in those 40 days but he did give a commandment how about that oh yeah what was that go read it go read it the last chapter of Luke. And we went over this in the Bible podcast. And he told them to tarry in Jerusalem until they were filled with the Holy Ghost. So they did. Now follow the Holy Ghost. Follow the disciples into Jerusalem. There you go. You want an example of how to be saved? Why wouldn't you follow the apostles? They walked with the Master. They walked with God. They walked with the Lamb. They ate. Why would you not look at the apostles? That's another thing I point out in the Bible podcast. People have devalued the Word of God, and of course, all the people in the Word of God are devalued, and they're all conscrewed into some. Uh, circus, just give us bread and circus, bread and circus. No, 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 no. You know, that's terrible. No, no, no. The Word of God should be the highest value in your heart, and then you should be obedient. That's the second value. You should, you should value your obedience because you're going to obey something. You're going to obey you, and you'll see how miserable you can get your life to be. It's just a matter of time. Okay, now, or you can take your obedience and say, Lord Jesus, I want to be your disciple. Well, then line up with the disciples. Line up with Peter, John, Mark, Luke, Paul. Line up. And what did they obey? Listen, you're going to find out that the Jewish nation obeyed the apostle Peter. 3,120 people were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Strangers from Rome were there too. 
How are you going to ignore? Ignore. That's what I wanted to get to. We love to ignore our responsibility. Isn't it the truth? It's just human nature. <laughs> but praise God, here, here's the Bible podcast. Here's the presence of God in your heart, in your life, screaming in your ear, repent, be baptized in Jesus' name for the uh, remission of sins. See, Satan doesn't want your sins remitted. He doesn't care if you go to church. He doesn't care how many times you read your Bible. He doesn't care how pious a covert narcissist that you are. You're always going to be a sinner. You're so pious and humble. God, oh yeah, and Satan loves it. <laughs> Listen, sin is cancer, my friend, to everything. And all you do when you become a repeat offender is give Satan a pull string. And believe you me, he'll pull it. He doesn't care if it takes your whole life. He doesn't care on the day of judgment when you're running for the door to heaven and you get right, your nose can feel the, the freshness of heaven and all of a sudden you get jerked back. Honey, that's forever. He, that's, that's how Satan wants to get us. We better never make an allegiance with sin. We better grow up and be responsible. You know, narrow is the way to eternal life. Few there be that find it. Let alone people that can't be focused, disciplined, and committed. Okay? So, being sincerely wrong doesn't make it right. Half-truths are still a lie. Good intentions will not save you. We need the confidence of the apostles' doctrine because if they got it wrong, we're all going to hell. That's the that's the truth. How how so? You got to obey the apostles' doctrine. It's not my word. I had to obey it, and so I'm sharing it. I'm making sure that uh, through this avenue of media outreach, uh, because I'm you know look people don't people aren't going to like you for being obedient to the to the will of God to the apostles' doctrine. Oh no. Oh no, they're going to go, oh boy, you know. But we're going to have to start somewhere. And we and just like the apostles, where did they start? They started just where Jesus told them in Luke, in Jerusalem. And that baptism and remissions of sins would be preached in his name. How about that? And they would receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Now folks, if what more examples do you need? Acts 2, 8, 9, 10, and 19. They all obeyed the apostles' doctrine. Um, Paul would write the Corinthians in the first chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians and say, I didn't baptize you in my name. See, a name, not titles. Matthew was baptized in Jesus' name. Matthew would write his gospel 30, 35 years after his baptism in Jesus' name. Name is singular in that, in that scripture. Name, not names. You know, English teacher. You, you know, you went to school, you learned father's not a name, son's not a name, and Holy Ghost is not a name. You know that. And you know what? If it was, then you taught these little children the wrong, that the, you taught them wrong. So we know that father's not a name, son's not a name, and Holy Ghost is not a name because of our English teacher. And the Lord understands grammar better than all of us. <laughs> okay. So... That's why they practice. That's another thing. Nobody in the Bible is baptized in titles. So where do you get any type of foundation to stand on to say, uh, when Dale went to the Church of Christ, I got baptized in titles. There is no substantial, and my sin was still applied. It wasn't until I was in Europe and learned and studied under a great man of God about baptism. And I thought, oh my goodness. So I got rebaptized, just like... Paul met in the 19th chapter, disciples and believers, 12 of them. They were John's disciples. 24 years later, they weren't right. Okay, they were sincerely wrong. And so Paul said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Now they could have said, yeah, I got tingles. Yeah, I got a runny nose. Yeah, I, I ran the aisles. Yeah, I feel good. Yeah, I got a miracle. No. They said, we don't know what you're talking about. And he goes, well, how are you baptized? See, we, we try to tell someone we got the Holy Ghost without saying we speak in tongues. Now, what? It, so my question to you is, what sign was given every time the Holy Ghost is mentioned filling 
the Jews, filling the Samaritans, filling the Gentiles, filling the Apostle Paul, filling these 12 disciples in the 19th chapter of Acts. It says it. They spoke in tongues. And Paul would teach the Corinthians in the 14th chapter of the second book of Corinthians that he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks to God. Paul said he spoke in tongues more than anyone. And you're going to tell me you don't need the Holy Ghost? I'm sorry. You're settling for a counterfeit illusion, doctrines of devils, seducing spirits, a lie. You're not going to be sincerely wrong and say, God, you're going to accept me being sincerely wrong. That puts you in control. We serve him. He, he served us on Calvary. He served us through the Gospels. He shows us the type of servant he was. Now he demands our obedience. That's how the apostles approached it. Okay, so let's be apostles of Jesus. Let's be ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven and do it right. Okay, so don't be a sucker. Okay, if they ain't preaching the word of God, if they're not baptizing in Jesus' name and laying hands and you're, that you can hear them speak in tongues, leave. What heaven are you going to? This is the heaven. This is the church. Jesus said the gates of hell would not prevail against. Look at the nonsense going on in our our our, our most of our persuasion, uh, men persuaded churches. They're embracing perversion. They're celebrating perversion. That come on, folks. Come on. It, you, you know, it's it, look. It's so in our face. They're going to cram it down your throat. I watched a video where a gentleman made a declaration that these groups were to carry a gun and defend themselves. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, and, and you know, if you were, if you grew up in the eighties, you know, I'm talking to you, you know, I'm talking, it wasn't this way in the eighties. Come on. And I know that our parents said it wasn't that way. But you, we are literally a generation, if you grew up in the 80s, that have seen a, the major debauchery. We've seen, maybe from the 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s, the technical advances. But, but we have seen uh, the technical advances of communication and satellite influence in our lives. But now we're seeing the debauchery of the human uh, the human psyche, the human awareness, the human experience. We're seeing a complete debauchery of it. And, 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 and these groups are declaring war that if they don't get to go into the uh, restrooms of other genders, they have a right to kill anyone stopping them to go squat on a porcelain throne. It's terrible. Unbelievable. So anyway, but you know what? Here's something I want to point out. Jesus never got caught up in the nonsense that was going on in the government of his time, all the movements during his time, all the bathhouses during his time. No. No, because, see, that's the playing field of sin and debauchery, okay? Yeah, that it's nothing new. It's nothing new. So we can't... We can't get so consumed by the sin and darkness and debauchery and Satan's. Satan's already got a, a, a cesspool, but he's looking for the ones who are on the narrow road, who've obeyed the apostles' doctrine, who are going for the door of heaven. Praise God. Oh, be obedient to the apostles' doctrine. Okay? And uh, we're excited. Okay, so if you're seeing this video, the reason now I'm on YouTube is I'm trying to reach, uh, you know, more, 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 maybe a broader audience, maybe uh, just more. But, but unfortunately on Facebook, the last two videos that had been placed up, I lose audio in the last 15 minutes. Someone said, check my settings. But see, before that, nothing, all my video content, audio goes up. So um, none of that, I, I'm having none of those problems here on Facebook yet. And so... But on the Bible podcast, we want you to understand, one, your responsibility to you, your responsibility to be focused, disciplined, and committed, your responsibility to the wellness of your mind, the wellness of your senses, your feelings and emotions. Those are all gifts from God. So don't throw it in the dumpster. Don't put yourself 
in in the way of a semi. Don't put yourself on. Don't lay down on the train tracks and, and think you're going to take a nap. No. But what we do promote is following Jesus and his apostles, just like they did on the day of, just like they did here in the Bible. And, and we let the gospels groom us. And then we let the obedience get us saved. And we follow the apostles doctrine. Now, once we're saved, now we got to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Now, dabbling with sin will not achieve that. You will be disappointed in yourself. That's narcissism. Your narcissist in you will, will make sure you feel guilty for what you just did. Okay? Then you'll try to rationalize in your mind how to justify it. Now, see, that's, that's actually practicing um, your blindness, practicing your ignorance, practicing sinfulness. And then a wall goes up between you and God. That's right. We look, look, I know the struggle, but it's time to take it seriously. Focus, discipline, commitment. Listen, when you went into the military, when you went into that college, you had the you had the butterflies, you didn't know what to expect, but you got focused, discipline, and committed. And guess what? With that type of training, you can achieve anything. Isn't that, that right? That's why we have heart doctors, brain surgeons. We have wonderful, gifted human beings who gave focus, discipline, and committed to their field, and they achieved great things, and they may have, may save my life, your life one day, because thank God they got focus, discipline, and committed. And here on the Bible Podcast, we want you to make heaven. Don't be a sucker. Don't be a sucker foo. Get saved. Obey the apostles' doctrine. Praise God. Okay, so... Think about your wellness. Think about your salvation. Have you obeyed the Apostles' Doctrine? We encourage you to do so as soon as possible. Read it, believe it, obey it. Okay? Okay? Now, Paul would write in the Roman church letter, chapter 6, he said, Know ye not that as many of us were baptized in into Jesus Christ. Think about it. Many of us, he included himself, baptized into Jesus Christ. We're baptized into his death. That's where we need to stay, my friends, in death. Praise God. And we rise in the newness of life that the character and the life of Jesus is manifested through us to the glory of God. How about that? Yes. Yes. And, and look, be careful. Be careful. But it takes training. You know, anyone that went into the military, you didn't know how to take a, a rifle apart in the dark. <laughs> but, but you can. After that drill instructor drills it. And that's what we need to let the Word of God get drilled into us. Come into agreement with the Word of God. Come into agreement with the, the Apostles' Doctrine. Obey the Apostles' Doctrine. Praise God. Now, Paul would write also in the Roman letter that sin shall not have dominion over you. The only reason you struggle with sin is lust. James, Jesus' half-brother, writes about that struggle in his book. That's it. It's real simple. So guess what? Come out of adolescence. Come out of immaturity. Come out of the flesh. You got to. Come on. Come on. Okay? Get on your feet. Get, get, get focused, disciplined, and committed to the Word of God. Praise God. Live in the moment. That's all you got is a moment. Have Him in your moment every moment of the day. Praise God. Walk as a new creature in Christ. It's Okay? But we got to get you baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. That's how the apostles... Look, you didn't walk with Jesus. I didn't walk with Jesus. So... If they needed what was required when Jesus went into heaven from the Mount of Olives, how much more do we need it? Come on. Heaven is approaching. We're excited you tuned in. Until next time, let Jesus' love reign over you. When you truly love someone, listen to this. When you truly love someone, you will walk in an agreement with them you will value that relationship 
at its highest level. Look, do you want your marriage to last? Then quit cheating on your husband. Do you want your marriage to last? Quit cheating on your wife. Quit putting thoughts in your mind that valid that 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 violate the relationship that's required that it takes. And if you can't find that in yourself, you can't find that with someone that you're with, it's time to move on. You will only purchase to yourself heartache and misery. Okay? And we do this to ourselves. Why? Because we're not focused, disciplined, and committed to the Word of God. So when something happens, give God the glory. He's trying to save you. He's trying to He's trying to, what did I say in the beginning? He's trying to approach you. See, I called on the name of the Lord, and that started the motion of heaven to come to me. And when it did, I got obedient. That's right. And thank God for people who will tell people to repent of their sin, telling people they need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. They'll speak in tongues and this is, this is wonderful, to go be buried in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Remission of the sins. Come on. And then we get on fire and committed, disciplined, and focused on the Word of God. All right? All right. Until next time, put the Word of God on the throne of your heart and be blessed.